This section is all about learning optimization techniques for Redux that'll make your app run faster. The first optimization that we'll be working with is normalization. In our case, the package we use to do this is called Normalizer. Normalization is a term seen throughout computer science. The most common reference to it is database normalization. Database normalization is a design technique which organizes tables in a manner that reduces redundancy and dependency on data. The way normalization is used in JavaScript is to handle nested JSON as returned from an API. The way Normalizer works is you define a schema, or what the JSON will look like, and the library returns an object of entities keyed by their ID, as well as an array of IDs of those objects. This will become way more clear as we walk through the examples though. The first thing you're gonna do is yarn add normalizer. All of our normalization magic takes place in only five lines. The data actually doesn't have any nested objects, so when we normalize it, it's fairly straightforward. The server sends down an array of objects, each of these objects represents an image and have a key of ID. So when we're creating the schema, we'll mimic it by saying that we have an image whose ID attribute is ID. The beauty of normalizer is that we don't have to add an ID field. If our object came back without an ID, but instead a field called image ID, like this, then we could replace the ID attribute with that too. And it would be that simple. There's also a shorthand since normalizer defaults to looking for an ID that you could see on line 62. The actual data that is returned from the Pixabay API is an array though. So we'll use the normalizer shorthand and say that our image list schema is an array of our image schemas. Now, when we call the normalize function for an array of images, it'll return the normalized data. This is the output from the normalize function. An entity's object with the key images, which we set in the image schema, and a result, the images object is an object of all the image objects keyed by their ID. The result array is an array of those IDs. Now that our data is coming back in a different format, we need to handle it differently in the reducer. We now have an image object and an image IDs array that we have to handle on image success. As you can imagine, we can't just simply feed the flat list with an array of objects anymore. As you can see, we've made the card feed a React component instead of just a function that returns JSX. We need to do this because the data prop for the flat list is now just the image IDs array, but we still need to send the image object down to the image card. In this case, the render item has to reference the props too. You might be saying to yourself, wow, this seems like it made our app less performant. That's a fairly good observation. Normalization is not always needed in a JavaScript app. Let me hop over to an example where normalization is very helpful though. In this example, I've decided to use JServices Jeopardy API. As you can see in the question object, there is an ID. There's also a category object with an ID too. So what we're going to do is start with the embedded object and create a category schema. We'll then create a question schema and say that each question contains a category. Then finally, we'll create the questions array schema since we'll be getting 20 questions in array similar to the Pixabay data. You can see all that set here. This action is being called in a componented mount similar to our Pixabay action. You'll see here the response has two entities, questions and categories, and only one result. The one result is an array of the question IDs. So where are the category IDs being used? As you can see here, inside the question object, the category field was an object was replaced with a single ID. This API is robust enough to include a category ID field but we'd have to have gotten that from the category API separately. So the way that we've done it is just hit one endpoint and get back all the information. The last thing to show is the reducer. I've written it in another way here that doesn't use the spread operator, but instead uses the object method assign. Both work well, it's just a matter of preference. 